Oh, hi, uh, my name is Andrew Gelman. I'm a professor of statistics and political science at Columbia. I've been teaching here since 1996. I'm always impressed that the students know more than I do about so many things. Um, just this morning, a graduate student came to me. He had been looking at data from um, ticketing, police um, moving violations. And there is this suspicion that the police have some sort of unofficial quota so that they're supposed to get a certain number of tickets by the end of the month. But you can look at the data and see whether you have more tickets at the very end of the month. He looked at something slightly different. He compared police that had had fewer tickets in the first half of the month to those who had more tickets and found that the ones who had fewer in the first half had a big jump in the second half of the month, which he attributed to a policy where the police don't have a um, don't have a quota, but they do it comparatively. So if you've been ticketing fewer than other people in your precinct, then they hassle you and tell you you're supposed to do more. But we're not we're still not quite sure. He was just telling me about this today. It's complicated because there could just be a variation. It could just be that the police who had more tickets in the first half have fewer in the second half, just because it goes up and it goes down, and you happen to see that. So we have to do more, um, uh, look at the data in different ways in order to try to understand, like to rule out different explanations for what's happening. I think that at least, well, it depends on what field you're working on. So if, if someone's working, we, we have a student working on astronomy, and there we're working with the astronomy professor, David Shimanovich, and it's very it's necessary for us to combine our skills so we have skills in visualizing data and fitting models and computation but it's not like David Shimanovich gives us the data and we fit it we have to work together in a collaboration so that's sort of always the case that we have to have a bridge connecting the applications to the modeling and the data I think all the projects I've told you so far are exciting and interesting, and, and we're doing other things too. Um, we have a paper called 19 Things We Learned from the 2016 Election, and we're breaking down survey data, um, looking at how people voted, how young people and old people voted, um, comparing the gender gap among younger and older voters and among different ethnic groups. Um, that's very challenging. And you. Even if you have a big survey where you want to estimate small subgroups of the population, it requires some statistical modeling. Well, the, I think the polls are, were pretty good. They um, had Hillary Clinton ahead by um, uh, getting about 52% of the two-party vote, and she actually got 51%, so that wasn't, wasn't too bad. Polls are off in some key states. Uh, I think that had to do with non-response, that people, certain um, Republicans, were not responding to polls um, in certain states. Uh, the way we can go forward is to do more adjustment of surveys. So it's harder and harder to reach people, so more and more adjustment needs to be done. But maybe surveys need to be adjusted also based on whether people are live in urban or rural areas and their partisanship and, and some other things. So one is never going to do perfect, but there's potential for improvement.